Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about all the series that I finished this year. So being a fantasy reader, the starting and finishing of series is a frequent occurrence in my life. The finishing part less frequent, the starting part unfortunately more frequent. There's always a new series to start and then that just you have no time to finish the ones you've already started. That said, I did polish off quite a few series because a few series that I was in the middle of had their concluding book come out this year and I read it when it came out. Yep, so I have made a list and I have mm, eight, yes, eight series that I finished this year. So we're just going to go through them one by one and I'm going to tell you the, what the series is and how I felt about it in general and how I felt about its conclusion. This will be spoiler free though. So other than, I mean, if you think my opinion, good or bad, is spoilery, then this is spoilery. <laughs> but I feel like most of these, you already know how I feel about it because I've already talked about it. Um, at some point on this channel. There's two on here that I very recently finished, um, as in like within the last week. So you don't know anything about how I feel about those because I barely just finished them. So they we're just going to go in chronological order because I made this list by looking at my Goodreads um, like reading challenge for this year. So the first one is Mistborn. Oh yeah, so for a couple of these... Mm, yeah, for a couple. I say I finished the series insofar as like I, the trilogy. So in the case of Mistborn, I finished the original Mistborn trilogy. That doesn't necessarily mean that I finished every book there is within the universe or expanded universe or saga or whatever. So for example, Red Rising, which is not on this list. If I was to have read just the trilogy, but not the saga, I did finish that. Anyway, so yeah, back to Mistborn. I finished the trilogy. I think that was like the first book that I finished this year is Hero of Ages. And I have a video on my channel which was the beginning, the precursor, the sort of the taste, the teaser, the trailer for Sanderson Gate. Because right after reading Hero of Ages, I read The Way of Kings and we all know how that went. I don't want to say too much about Mistborn because I kind of already talked about how I felt about the conclusion of Mistborn. That was kind of the whole point of that video that I thought the series was really good up until the end. And then the end killed it for me. And I had kind of trouble talking about it in that video because for some reason I decided to make it spoiler free. Plus it was just that even if it had been spoilery, I would have had to explain so many pieces of the trilogy. There would have been a monstrously long video all to the point of just saying I didn't like it. <laughs> Not that I didn't like the trilogy. I would still say that I like the trilogy. And when people ask uh, for reading recommendations or specifically say, oh, I've heard Mistborn's good, is it? I'll usually tell them that in general, I think it's well written. And for the first two books, I really, really enjoyed it. I really, really liked it. The third book for me personally killed it because I didn't like the sort of concluding message wrap up, the, the, the way things wrapped up and the way things were explained. I didn't like it. I thought it was heavy handed and a little bit preachy. So I didn't like that. <laughs> I do want to mention this because it's relevant to another series that I'm going to talk about at the very end. One and eight. One and eight on my list. <laughs> Mistborn, um, people, I mean, people just hate me for disliking anything Sanderson does because of reasons, but specifically accused me of being a, a staunch atheist or that I'm seeing too much into it. Or if I hadn't known that Sanderson was Mormon, then I wouldn't have decided to see this message in it. And I don't think any of that is true, especially the fact that people have said, well, you just don't like any religion in books whatsoever, which is not true. I don't like when religion is preached to me in a book. <laughs> I don't care if the characters themselves are going through something religious or are themselves extremely religious or something like that. But I don't like if the whole point of a book has been to convince me of a particular brand or idea or way of thinking. I, that's propaganda. So um, spoilers, the last series that I'm going to talk about in this video is another series where I didn't like the messaging. And it's the exact opposite of Mistborn because the messaging is anti-religious. And I didn't like that any better. So for those who accused me of just being anti-religious and that's why I didn't like Mistborn, I don't like it any better when a book's message is anti-religious. I don't like there to be a preachy, shoved-in-my-face message of any description. So yeah, that's Mistborn. Oh, if you don't know what Mistborn is, uh, I don't, okay, I don't know how to explain Mistborn. The premise is what if the bad guy won and then the, the magic system in it is based on eating metals and then the people who can use this magic are able to consume those metals and use those metals to power different types of magic. And it's like really complicated and really filled with rules. It's a very hard magic system, which is kind of what Brandon Sanderson is known for. So that's Mistborn. Okay. Much lighter and fluffier. Number two is the Winners Trilogy, which is the Winners 
curse the winners. What's the second? I always forget what the second one is called. The winners. The winner's crime. Holy moly. Man, that took me way too long. Yeah. The winner's crime and the winner's kiss. I've talked about the series before. The covers don't do it justice and or if not, don't do it justice. They just don't reflect what kind of story it is. So you can like the covers if you want. I mean, I don't. But if you like the covers, that's fine. But they do not reflect the type of story that it is. Neither cover version. Uh, that series needs a new cover. It's a YA slightly old school style fantasy that has quite like romance is quite prominently featured in it but not nearly as much as the covers would make you think uh it's a lot more if you wanted only romance out of it you would be disappointed because it's a lot more politics and intrigue and conspiracy and war and battle and a lot more of that just more romance than a book that's purely political battle fantasy would have i really like the main character and there's something about Mary Rutkowski's writing that is just so bingeable and unput downable to me. I I didn't want to pick those books up for the longest just because of the covers made me think that they were exactly the kind of book that I would not want to read. Once I learned that they are not that kind of book, then I did buy them. Um, it took me a while to pick it up. And then when I finally did, I I read the first one in all in one day and then uh, didn't move on to the next book for months and months. Not really because I didn't like it. I just didn't. And then when I picked up the second book, finally, then I read the second and third books back to back within like three days, I think, because Mary Rukowski's writing, I just, I just gobble it up. Like I can't stop reading it. I don't know what it is about it. It's not especially lyrical. It's not especially cliffhangery. I, I don't, I honestly, I've, I've tried so hard to pinpoint what it is about her writing that I just... I'm just insatiable when I'm reading her writing. I can't, it's, I wouldn't even say these books are my favorite or that she's my favorite author or this writing style is my favorite. But when I'm in the middle of it, it's like MSG. I can't stop. So yeah, I mean, there are good books. And that's not to say they're not. They are definitely YA, definitely fantasy, definitely romance, definitely, I don't know. They're fun. There's like a lot to them. The will they or won't they in the romance was dragged out a bit too long for my taste. But overall, I really, really enjoyed the series. And Mary Rutkowski has a new book coming out next year. So I'm really, it takes place in the same universe, I think, as the Winter's Trilogy. So I'm excited about that. And it, I don't love the cover for the new book, but oh my God, it's so much better than the Winter's covers. Um, Next up, I, why, I don't know. Okay, why did I list it so early in my list? So much for being chronological. Number three on my list is the Raven's Mark trilogy by Ed McDonald, which is Black Wing, Raven Cry, and Crowfall. I actually read the whole series this year because I reread Black Wing and Raven Cry and then read Crowfall. I guess that's why it's so early in my list because I reread Black Wing pretty early in the year and that must have been when I wrote it down. And then I reread Raven Cry and somewhat recently finally got to reading Crowfall. This is an extremely grim, dark fantasy, uh, very industrial, very political, very filled with conspiracy and grit and very gray, morally gray characters and a morally gray world. It's dark. It's dark AF. Um, one of the grimmest, darkest, grim, dark fantasies I've read. I really enjoy it. I have to be honest though, the end um, left me scratching my head a little bit. I am not entirely sure I know what happened because it got very magic-y at the end and something happened but I am not sure I know what the something is. I'm gonna have to reread it because the third book, I was really, really loving it. And there was some really excellent reveals and excellent political stuff going on. The grit was grittier and the gore was gorier and I was into it. And then we got to this real magic-y bit at the end where it's kind of like the climactic epic culmination of all three books. And it got so wonky and bizarre with the magic that I kind of lost track of what the F was going on. So I'm going to need to reread that because I was like, wait, who, who, what, how did he, oh. <laughs> overall, I still recommend the series. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know what happened. Okay. Number four on my list is Air Awakens. And I have a whole video on my channel um, that's about how to write a terrible book based on my experience with the Air Awakens series, which I didn't like really any part of, but I had an audiobook that was all of the series in one long audiobook. So I just kind of plowed on through it 
and then made a video about why it's garbage. So I don't want to say again too much about it because I talked, it's, that video is like, gotta be like 40 minutes, I think, where I just kind of went through all the ways like it chose to do a thing it shouldn't have chosen to do. And then the things that it did choose to do that might have been fine, it did them badly. <laughs> and it's just like how not what to write like masterclass. <laughs> oh man, that series is yikes. Yeah, it's, it's like elemental magic, um, but it's mainly a romance and a bad romance because, okay, if you're just going to be an unapologetically heavy on the romance kind of series, fine, but the romance wasn't even written well, so it really just failed on every level. Next is something that failed. The, the failure of this series is far more criminal than Air Awakens because Air Awakens never promised to be good, and that is The Nevernight Chronicle by Jay Kristoff. Again, I have a pretty lengthy video complaining about Dark Dawn the conclusion to the Nevernight Chronicle. This one hurt the most this year because I really loved Nevernight until this year. And I have since gotten rid of almost all of my Nevernight books. That's how much Dark Dawn ruined it for me. I loved Nevernight and I really loved God's Grave, the second book. Dark Dawn, not only was it bad, but it retroactively made me dislike the first two books because what the first part of what I loved about the first two books was what they seemed to be leading to. It kept teasing where this is all headed, leaving clues for you to wonder about where this is going. And Dark Dawn is the reveal, is the thing you've been working towards. And to find out that you haven't been working towards anything, that's all just been a big joke, then I can't enjoy Nevernight or Dark God's Grave anymore either because they just feel like tricks, no pun intended. That it's just a big lie. It's a big con to get you to read this. And then the Dark Dawn was pulling the curtain back and seeing that Oz is just a failure of an old carpetbagger. Dark Dawn is, oh God, it pissed me off so much. I don't want to again be spoilery and I do my video on Dark Dawn specifically. I talked, I did a non-spoiler section in the beginning um, and then also did spoilers. So if you want to know anything about Dark Dawn, I have a whole video, but no, <laughs> no. Uh, next up is a book series that, yeah, these last three, I haven't really talked about at all on my channel, at least not this year. And this is the Half Drowned King series. I keep thinking there's a name for the series because that's also the name of the first book. It's the Half Drowned King, the Sea Queen, and the Golden Wolf. I pretty much read these back to back. I might have read something in between, but I pretty much read them back to back. This is a Viking historical fiction series that is based on the sagas of King Harald. It's clear that the author has really studied uh, Norwegian history and has really studied the sagas. Uh, I believe the author herself is either from, actually, I, I think she might have been born in the US, but she's clearly of sort of Nordic descent. Her name is Linnea um, Hartsreker. I think that's how you say it. The series is very, very Viking-y. If you want that, <laughs> if you want a very, very Viking-y book, then this series is fantastic. I really, really, really enjoyed it. If what you want is sort of Viking light, but mainly like a romance or mainly an adventure story that kind of has a Viking aesthetic, you probably won't like this because it's very, very, very much the sagas. <laughs> Basically what she's done is taken the sagas of King Harold. She's had some artistic license with sort of combining some characters into one, adding a couple events that didn't happen in the sagas. She messed around with it a little bit, but mainly she's, because the sagas don't really delve into human emotion or motivation. It's just sort of events. So she's taken the saga of King Harold and tried to sort of apply her more modern storytelling to sort of try to figure out what would have made these characters do this. What would, have, what would the characters have been feeling when they made these choices? And so novelized it in a way that really fleshes out these characters that are featured in the sagas so that they are sort of flesh and blood three-dimensional people. But it is this expansive, it, it covers many, many years and multiple generations. It follows multiple perspectives of these Vikings who are killing and fucking and having children and fighting with each other and betraying each other and loving each other and swearing oaths to each other. And it's a lot of that. <laughs> so if you have no interest in a bunch of Vikings doing Viking-y things, for three books, <laughs> don't read it. But if you that sounds great to you, then I highly, highly recommend this series. I loved it. And then the last two um, are the ones that I finished in this last week. And so number seven on my list is The Folk of Air Trilogy by Holly Black. So I just read Queen of Nothing. And I still like the series, but Queen of Nothing, I, don't, I hesitate to compare it to Nevernight because I did end up liking it. I gave Queen of Nothing four stars. But the it's sort of this kind of similar situation to Nevernight where the first two books led me to think the story was going somewhere else. I 
from the Cruel Prince and the Wicked King, what I really liked about them um, and what set them apart for me was how cruel and how gray and how unlikable the characters were, which to me is unique in YA. YA tends to have, if you do have a morally gray character, they still have a, a redemption arc or a tragic backstory that explains why they are the way they are, heart of gold that they're trying to hide, or reasons for what they're doing as opposed to just being evil. <laughs> and The Cruel Prince and Wicked King seem to me to be a story about some selfish, ambitious, and wicked people who, you know, have sort of toxic feelings for each other. And why not? <laughs> why not write a story about wicked, cruel, selfish people being into each other? <laughs> Queen of Nothing kind of pulls back and is more like all those other YA books that I was talking about, where, oh no, there's reasons, and there's ex explanation, and redemption, and, and all this kind of thing. And no completely but it did kind of soften things a lot and make everyone a lot more likable and <laughs> as i grimace is I, I like reading about likable characters and it's not to say that i don't but that's what was unique about the series and then ended up not being the case so i feel a little bit tricked a little bit betrayed by that ultimately the queen of nothing was a really fun story and i enjoyed it and it didn't really it's not so much that it didn't live up to what it was promising. It's more just that I had a different impression or I had assumed, made assumptions about where it was going, what kind of story it was that it, rightly or wrongly. So there's, there's nothing about the Cruel Prince or Wicked King that would suggest that you can't have a redemption arc. I just didn't think that it would. And I kind of loved that about the books is that it didn't seem like the kind of story that would bother with a redemption arc. So you can absolutely have a redemption arc. There's no reason you can't. I was just kind of loving... It when everyone was just kind of wicked and evil. <laughs> and I really like that about it. So Queen of Nothing is great. And if you like the series, you'll probably like Queen of Nothing. And I'll probably reread all three of them. But yeah, it was too, it was too happy. It was too nice. And the last series on my list is the one that I already kind of mentioned when I was talking about Mistborn. And that is His Dark Materials by uh, Philip Pullman. Once again, just like with Mistborn, I, by this I mean that I've read the original trilogy. I've read The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife, and The Amber Spyglass. I have not read the expanded universe kind of books, the prequel or the sequel or the novellas. I haven't read any of that yet. I do own the Book of Dust, The Secret Commonwealth, and um, I'll probably get the novellas. <laughs> These books to me progressively got worse. I gave five stars to Golden Compass, 100% stand by that. I really liked the Golden Compass. And the Subtle Knife, I gave four stars to because it started to seem a bit messagey, a bit preachy, kind of doing too many things. But it was still introducing some really interesting concepts and expanding the world a lot. And there was still some interesting magics and new characters that we were meeting. Um, and so it still seemed to have a lot of potential, even if it was getting a little messagey. And then the third book seemed to forget altogether that there was a story and was just all about the messaging. It was like a thinly veiled allegory. And... Uh, I gave it three stars because it was great, just like with Hero of Ages. I gave three stars to Hero of Ages. So for people who, you know, act like I've done a bad thing, I still gave it three stars. The Amber Spyglass was just so preachy and so obviously trying, trying to send a message rather than tell a story that I, I couldn't enjoy it. It was still a creative idea. There was still really creative things being done. Some of the character moments, I, I did tear up because um, I had gotten attached to the characters. So there were some emotional moments, but... It was so preachy <laughs> and in an anti-religious way. So I, honestly, I feel like one of the reasons that I hate super preachy books isn't even so much that I don't like the preachiness of it. It's more that I feel like I'm being insulted, that my intelligence is being insulted, that you think that if you tell a subtler story that I won't pick up on the message because plenty of subtler stories out there, if you examine them, there's an argument to be made for the fact that what you might come away from it is an impression that a certain kind of a thing might be good or a certain kind of a thing might be bad. I mean, honestly, every book has that to some extent because the actions of the characters either lead to good things or don't lead to good things, or maybe the message is that it doesn't matter what you do and it's a nihilistic message. Um, I mean, every book, it has its own sort of set of values guiding it because the person who wrote it has a set of values guiding them. And um, I can read your book and judge for myself um, and just see what you're saying for myself. I don't need you shoving it in my face. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. So when something is being preachy, I just feel like the author thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I don't really care if you ultimately want me to feel like religion is good after I've read your book. I don't care if you want me to think religion is bad. <laughs> 
at the end of reading your book. I care that you think I'm too stupid to pick up on whatever your message is. So you decide to make it so obvious and so woven in so tightly to every single bit of your story into the magic into the characters into what happens to them to the words they say into the everything about it is just all about driving home this message I'm like okay fuck off like I I'm not an idiot I could pick up on your message without all this so please put your bullhorn down I still like this series which is what I say about Mistborn too so like everyone who can go suck a dick who says that I'm being unreasonable I can still criticize a book I like it. Yeah, I fully intend to read more books by Philip Pullman. And I would have said that I fully intend to read more Sanderson books, but the reaction of the fans has put me off the idea just because it's left a bad taste in my mouth being attacked that way. That said, I originally did intend to read the rest of the Mistborn books, the second generation or the second era or whatever it's called. They're kind of all tainted by the hate that I've got and continue to get. So I might in secret, read some more Sanderson and just never talk about it on the internet because ain't nobody got time for that. Let me know in the comments down below if you finished any series this year, if there are any series that um, I mentioned here that you are currently reading or that you also finished or that you now intend to pick up. Um, I post videos on Saturdays, so like and subscribe and I'll see you next Saturday.